Hi friends! If you click to check out the new Dior Golden Knights Holiday 2020 Quince, then please keep on watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, so you head over to my Instagram. I know I got the Dior again. I have several of their other quints that I still have to film with. I already showcased Jungle in my most recent monthly favors video. I have Mitsa, Tutu, and You Lick. I also picked up these holiday quints. I saw them, they look beautiful, but I'm like, you don't need them, Alicia. I don't need any of this stuff, let's just be clear. But there was something about the color arrangement and the pan embossing just looks so exquisite. And the fact that these suckers sold out so fast when they launched on Selfridges, and you know the FOMO, how it just overtakes you. It just convinces you that you need this said item. It was in stock, it was out of stock, it was in stock, it was out of stock. Finally, that little moment in time where it was in stock four, I picked both up. Both, uh, let's see here, they got different names. Golden Snow and Black Knight. I was not able to pick up the blush, but my friend Pam, however, shout out to Pam, told me about how Nordstrom just got the Golden Knight's Holiday highlighter. Because of how fast these things were selling out, I just got it. I just got it. I don't have the blush, but I did manage to pick up the Golden Knights long wearing sparkling true color lipstick in dark sparkle. This case, and we'll get further into the details. I don't want this to be totally all over the place, but just look at the component. It looks like a really intense spring on a Pilates performer. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of, but despite that, it's absolutely gorgeous. A couple of details on this collection, the fact that it's elusive and nobody can get it. I bought my two quints from Selfridges, and the reason why I insisted on buying from Selfridges is because it's $56 instead of 62. 62 will be the price if you were to buy this from a US retailer. Usually not all products sold on Selfridges are cheaper, but most are, including these Dior quints. These quints, of course, are limited edition. And let's see here, a total net weight of four grams or 0.14 ounces each. High color eyeshadow wardrobe and I love this. The box design indicates that it is indeed for the holidays with the snowflake print. Love that. Looking at a short shelf life of six months, so you know, use it. And these quints are made in Italy. The Dior Rific Golden Knights Limited Edition lipstick retails for $38 on Selfridges, maybe $42 for US retailers. Total net weight looking at 3.5 grams. It comes in four shades. I wanted to pick up the 073 Dark Sparkle. It's this beautiful plum sparkly shade. Of course, that one as well as the beige out of stock, but the pink and red are still in stock. If you want it. I'm trying to look for the expiration jar icon for shelf life. Can't find it, so I'm gonna assume 12 months. And this product is made in France. Oh, glasses on, hi. <laughs> of course, when these quints become available again on whatever retailer, I'll be sure to put those updated links down below in the description box. Why don't we come in a little closer for these swatches? <gasps> That's enough. First up, we have Black Knight. I'm telling you, fam, I don't even want to touch these pants. Look how be look at the detailing on this. It is absolutely gorgeous. Also inside the flap, you have some instructions. If you have no clue <laughs> which shadow to apply it where, each shadow is numbered, and they give you a soft look version, an intense look version. Thank you, Dior. So nice. Let's go in with this beautiful silver. Ooh, these are incredibly soft. Oh yes, that's beautiful. Next up, we have this black sparkle shade. Maybe more like a midnight. Ooh, that's pretty. The silver had a little bit of slip to it, which I think lends to that high metallic shine and finish. This one has a little more creaminess. So maybe more suitable for an all over lake color, you know, for that smoke. This shade, right? Oh my gosh, so gorgeous. Give me plum egg plant aubergine. Oh, I love that. It's a true, a true plum. Look at that beautiful sheen. 
Hmm. Headed down more into this navy satin. Satin, satin. Take a look at that. Well, that's completely and utterly gorgeous. And now onto the black satin shade to bring it all together. 089 Black Knight. I was hoping that, well, you know, these I feel could be distinguishable depending on where you place them on the lid. And I'm so happy to report that these uh, shadows don't have any fragrance. Thank God. The blush is due, unfortunately. And I did not pick up the holiday blush, but I did pick up one of their standard blushes. And unfortunately, this smells like perfume. Really? Is that really necessary? That's why I prefer the backstage line, but even the backstage blushes still had a little bit of fragrance, so whatever. Next up, we have Golden Snow. Look at this. This is absolutely gorgeous. I can't stand how beautiful it is, like really. This snowy white silvery shade. Oh, interesting to know how this compares. I see, this is more distinctly silver, whereas this one is more of a Silver base, but still very light, like like snow, like that snowy, glittery look. Next up, what appears to be like a pinky champagne shade. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Here, what appears to be more of the yellow gold highlight. Right up next to these, I like that tone. Is a cooler yellow tone. Oh, that is shiny. Oh, look at this beautiful antique shade. Matches my nail. What do we got? Oh, I love shades like this. You know what this is? That that is like a low key gigabyte from Subversive Mothership Three. I do think so. <laughs> Last up, we have this beautiful brown satin shade, which I think beautiful on its own as some. Oh, that's nice. Very interested to see how that looks all over the lid. So here are all the swatches for both Black Knight and Golden Snow. I'm really excited about Black Knight because that's a very interesting color story, but the optics of that quint is just so back to school. I love navy, one of my most favorite neutral colors, and when paired with that maroon plum, it's too much. Now we'll come in a little closer for this demo. <gasps> That's enough. A huge shout out to SP Nation who also not only did a video with the Suku cream foundation, he also did a video using these Dior Quints and it was so interesting to hear his perspective because he used to work for Dior and I don't know much about Dior makeup or eyeshadows. I just know as of late, their eyeshadow formula has been blowing everyone's mind and that hasn't always been the case. I don't know what's going on with all this noise. I think someone has like a leaf blower. Don't they know I'm filming with the Dior? For crying out loud. Going in with the Mario Master Prep and Set in Medium. Taking my hourglass brush and just whipping that across the lid in no particular precise fashion. <laughs> but I do appreciate just the ease of application that I don't feel inclined to carve under the brow. I'm gonna use my microblading pen though just to fill up a little bit towards the front and also to add some color since I lightly powdered over them when setting my forehead. I'm not gonna set the primer because I kind of just wanna see how these shadows do. And with that said, I'm most definitely starting with Black Knight. What shall we do? Well, hold on. We have instructions, fam. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. But where shall we put them? I wanna this, I don't know why, I'm just feeling like this is my Coyuto Premium 04 brush. And <laughs> let me tap some of that master prep down and I'm just tapping that shade right on the outer corner. It applies very creamy. I see the navy and it has a beautiful sheen. So that all over the lid will just be phenomenal. And I'm using the tip of the brush to just carve right under the crease and just pull it down. Well, now I have to see this shade as like a lid shade. So I'm definitely hitting the inner part of the lid. I'm just tapping and pulling up through the crease. That's I like that. Although I would love to see this as an all over lid shade because that all over the lid would just be phenomenal. I'm gonna take my finger 
there it is. I think I had leftover navy on my my 04. So you could see that more distinct plum shade. Using the tip of the brush to just whisk those edges. Well, smoky already, I see. Kind of curious to see this through the crease. I'm bringing it from the inside because I want to use some of the black to just further smoke out the edges of this navy. But I also want to see just like the underlying hue of this plum shade because sometimes hard to detect when it's applied on the lid as like that impactful lid shade. But when you blend it out, you can see the, the gradient of the edges show and I feel speaks more on the color. I think this is beautiful. Taking the black, just tap it a tap tap right here on the outer part of the hello eye anatomy outer lid and whisking that up through the aubergine maroon plum shade. This is absolutely gorgeous. I didn't know how successful I would be in combining these shades but I could very much say, this is a first impression, sorry I didn't mention that in the beginning. These shadows are gorgeous. I mean, look at the depth of color. The depth of color, the sheen, very easy to apply, I have to say. I think I want to keep that a little round, you know, let me be careful because it can get a little out of hand. I just wiped the brush so I have better control here and just, yes. That's it, that's where we're stopping, nothing more. Sonaji Worker Pro with the Sparkly Arkly. I know the Sparkly Arkly looks, will probably look a lot better on the lid, you know, cause it has the sparkles, but you know, we could still apply it on the lash line. I don't know if you can detect some of the sparkle, but this is a beautifully smooth texture. Why not? You know what? I wanna tap some on the outer part of the lid just so that some of that sparkle could show through. Tap it, tap, tap. This looks absolutely stunning. I love the texture of the shade. It has a little more creaminess to it, which I don't mind at all. And it's not dry despite the presence of the little particles in there. This silver shade, you know, you know. Not only on the inner corner, but also on the lower inner part of the lash line. I'm just building here and slowly pulling it up through the plum shade and tapping it. Well, hello. And let's merge these two shades together. Golden Snow. Where should we go? Taking my 03 Coyuto. Ah, uh, you know, fam. Let me go in with the finger first. This antique shade. I just like. Tones like these, the antique, rustic looking type of metal shades, look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that Dior came out with two quints to both address, you know, the, the dark and the sultry, but also a little lighter in terms of softer hues of color. So you got best of both worlds, but man, oh man, look how beautiful that antique is. Definitely want to go in with this shade. Now, I would love to come on here again, do two more looks using each of the quints because, for instance, you could have applied any of these metallic shades, these lighter metallic shades, and maybe use one of these shades as like a wing liner or exclusively just use one of these shades and maybe you have your favorite bronzer blush nearby and you apply that cheek product on the crease. So there's so many ways to go and I think Again, these shade offerings encourage that creativity. And I feel comfortable using these shades. I, I mean, I know maybe not everyone's gonna feel comfortable going in like this, but I think for this quad though, you'd be very happy to discover that, look how easily this blended. And this is due to the fact that it's a satin, but it's a satin with impact. You see the color, it doesn't look hazy or it doesn't lack saturation and the finish is so skin like and just look how beautifully it blends and how it naturally diffuses on its own get the heck out of here now i know we didn't go in with all of these however i am very happy to see what if this middle gold shade could kind of overlap the antique 
Oh, that's beautiful. So this overlay just adds a little bit of twinkle. It scatters beautifully over this, the, the pseudo gigabyte shade. And I'm sure if you allow it to settle, it's gonna look even more sparkly because it melts with, you know, the little oils that still come through the primer on your lid. That's what happens to me anyway, but I like that because the more emollient it is, the shinier it becomes. Just a little bit of this pink champagne shade, right? Oh, wow, hold on. I know it's hard to see. I'm gonna come in a little closer. It's a little too pinky for me. It looks distinctly pink, which I love because if you were to put that on your lid, then it's gonna show up as like a beautiful pink champagne shade. I'm gonna go back and do the snow shade and tap that. That's a little better. You know what we have to do, fam. We're gonna have to apply some of these on the cheekbones. I mean, <laughs> I'm taking a little more of the gold from the center, using my finger to tap on more and taking my finger with the antique shade to apply a little more on the lid, just so I could bring it more forward. Taking a little more of this brown satin, satin and tapping the snow shade just so it can melt better into the skin. Going back in my worker pro, doing a little more blendy blend here. What we can do is place this pink inner lower lash line because I think it has enough color to see that it's pink. I don't know if you can detect that on camera, but it's so beautifully shiny. Let's take a look at this shade. We're on the very center here. Ooh, that's pretty. The sun right now, although it's cloudy, I look very like bing, bing, bing on camera. So I'm sure it's hard to detect like what this really looks like, but a great way to incorporate these shades. Now with this, the snowflake shade, I'm not ready. I feel like it's going to be so like, rah. oh, that's pretty. Like right on the center here, it just melts into the skin so beautifully. I'm mixing both together and just, you know, right here on the nose, on the nose, the lip. That's a little better. I turned down the exposure. So now you could probably better see what's going on here. Woo, that was bright. Let's take a look at this lipstick. It's, first of all, the actual bullet. Look how beautiful this is with the logo here on the tip and you see the sparkly, do you see the sparkles and the snowflakes etched into the actual lipstick? I'm gonna put it on. Be very gentle here. Hold on, okay. Okay. Oh, you see that there is a sheen. And I do detect the blue sparkles in here, but it's not like they look distinctly blue sparkle. It's more so that when you mix the lipstick in with the, the sparkles in here, it just gives off like this sheen. It's pretty. Now, if you wanted to see, just to pull the look together, I will apply this blush that it's a little light, it's a little light on me, but it's all good. Going my Koyuto P02 cheek brush and just tapping that on. I think if you use a dense enough brush, you could pick up enough color for it to show like a flush. You know what I wanted to do for this side? This blush released last year for fall. I, you know, I kind of just want to go in and a little higher on this side because I think paired with this I, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yes, that's it. All right, let's put on some mascara and I'll be right back. And here is a wide shot of the finished look. We have both quince on the eyes, the Dorific lipstick and some Dior blush, the peacher one on the golden snow side and the plumier one on the black night side. I thoroughly enjoyed these quince. And again, I mentioned this when I was speaking about the jungle quince. I'm not well versed in Dior makeup in terms of its history in regards to the consistency about the eyeshadows. I do feel this is a great formula for luxury, most definitely. I mean, the depth of color I was able to achieve with black night is astounding and the hues I also believe very well thought out and this is true to what the Quint offers. I feel I got this on my eyes, most definitely. I think the shadows translated well from pan to lid, that there was no discrepancy, that they showed, again, true to how they appear in the palette and I was very pleasantly surprised and just 
very happy with how they blended, with how they applied. I like satin shades. I don't mind that there are no mattes present in this palette because quite frankly, when the satin is good, okay it could double as a lid shade it could double as your blend out shade and when you blend it out it just looks smooth there's no weird discoloration or texture on the lids it just looks diffused and blurred and i thoroughly enjoyed using black knight golden snow is also gorgeous i know this is a little light i also you know what, it goes with this lipstick. What am I talking about? The dark berry lip with like the lighter eye, but we still have some of that smoke and I just wanna use it again. I wanna see maybe just the beige shade on the lid and the brown satin on the lash line for that wing smoke. There's so many combinations I wanna do with Golden Snow. There's a lot to be unlocked here. And both of these quints, I just, Again, beautifully thought out, very holiday. Everything from the box that the quit is in, the embossing on the actual shadow pans, the colors themselves, the lipstick, the lipstick. This is such a beautiful color. I kind of wish I got the beige, but I have a lot of beiges. And I feel this is more holiday. I, I've said before, I need to wear these colors more often. And when it's a plummy deep shade for a lipstick and the lipstick itself, are you kidding me? And the fact, I'm going back to the quint, I'm so sorry, all over the place, that you could use some of those shades on your cheekbones, please forget it. Very happy that I made this splurge. It is a splurge, most definitely. Dior is a splurge. I do think you would not be disappointed if you get your hands on these palettes, but do keep in mind, you have to honor what you love, what you use mostly. If you're not into these shades, if this is way too smoky for you, because I'll show it again, the only light shade in Black Knight is the... Let me find the quint. Is the silver. This is the only light shade you have in this quint offering. Everything else is super dark. So if you're not ready to commit to that or you feel you'll never align with that mood, then no sense in getting Black Knight. If this is more your speed, if you feel you'll get more out of Golden Snow, I totally understand. But I love this. Like this every day, I wouldn't mind whatsoever. Or if you just needed to pull back a little bit, you could use any of those navy, black sparkle, or just black satin shades, or even the plum aubergine eggplant shade, maroon shade. On the lash line, as like your standout fun smoky wing, if you insist on using Black Knight, that'll be the route I take, but man, L like look at that L with the silver forget it thank you so much for tuning in fam i hope this helped i know i don't want this to be like i got it you didn't i hope these pop up again maybe you have these quints already and you just needed to see them in action to get you know the inspo going and i will be sure to leave sp nation's video down below so you can take a look at his video because he also created beautiful looks let me know fam if you're picking up anything from golden knights holiday 2020 from dior and until then that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you in here again with another review, tutorial, Dior video, monthly favorites, or nightly live chit chat. Take care, and I will see you again soon.